What are you doing? I thought you were in there already. was um, postponed a couple of days because they have been having really bad um, rain and kind of some snow up on the mountain where he's gonna go hunt and the hunt before him had trouble getting his sheep because of the weather and they had trouble going up in the plane to get that guy and return him so they kind of like took the full extended amount of days they needed um, so Miles and I ended up with an extra day to kill in Alaska, which is pretty amazing. And Miles said, well, stay is yours. Where do you want to stay? What do you want to do? And we've been planning this trip for like two years. So I have thoroughly researched all the places that I might have wanted to see or do or stay. And on the top of that list, because I really like to see amazing places that I love tourist places, places that are, are big and uh, a little bit historic and really nice and I wanted to see this place called 
Alieska Resort Hotel and uh, it's a ski resort basically. But we're in August, so of course we're not skiing. But I was like, oh, it'll be, it's a very expensive place to stay. And it's kind of hard to get into with my research. There was just like no openings at all. But since we had this extra day, we spontaneously said, hey, let's just drive down there and see it. Because I just wanted to see it. It was only an hour from Anchorage. Beautiful drive. Beautiful drive. And we get here and this place has 300 rooms. And I go and ask the guy at registration. I said, so do you have any rooms tonight? Um, and what do they cost? And he says, I only have 30 people in the whole place. There's only 30 people staying here. So yeah, I have rooms. So we got this amazing room for way, way less than it was should, should have cost. Um, everything in Alaska is so expensive. We're really thrilled. We just had the most amazing meal probably of this whole trip, I would guess. It, it was so good. There wasn't anybody. It was waterside. Outside, I had beer and Miles had halibut. I had wings and Caesar salad and it was they were the best wings I've ever had in my life. His halibut was incredibly well done. Like it was so, so good. And now we're just gonna sit here in the sun and sun soak for a while, enjoy the environment. Incredible place. We rented a couple of, we didn't rent them. Um, they have bicycles that you can take out and go around because they have another part of their lodge that's clear up at the top of the ski. Um, tram? Is that what it's called? I don't know, I'm not a skier. There's a big thing that goes clear the hell up on the mountain and you ride in it and you go up there to ski and there's another lodge up there. But anyway, in the summertime they have biking trails that start way up there and like switch back, back and forth and come back down here. And I was like, oh, I kind of think I want to do that. And I don't want to do that. That is very extensive. But we got to take the two bicycles that the hotel has um, that come with your rooms and go around and enjoy all the beautiful paths. Good morning everybody. I was just doing one last little video here before we take off and move on to our next adventure in Alaska. I was going for a little jog so I'm out of little breath but they have the most amazing little hiking and walking paths, jogging paths, whatever, all the way around this resort. They're all paved or gravel and you can get a bike or you can do whatever and oh, it's so beautiful this morning. It's like probably right around 60 degrees, fogged in crisp and perfect. I got up, because of the time change, it's really, really early. Because <laughs> I usually get up at like, I don't know, seven, which is kind of late actually in where I'm from. But that is five here. Five's a little early for restaurants and coffee and all those wonderful things. But I got up and I went to this little restaurant, it's called The Pond cafe on the second floor balcony of this amazing resort and Miles of course was still sleeping he's not a morning person at all at all and I flourish in early mornings especially on trips where as gorgeous as this and I had the nicest waitress I have ever had and she was just delightful and she brought me coffee and that has something to do with it you know 
a little bit of coffee in the morning goes a long way. But we just had, I don't know if she did, but I enjoyed my morning so much more because I had somebody local to talk to, to express my excitement about. And she was telling me about how she wants to start a jewelry line and how her father and her mom are self-sustaining Alaskans. And it's just really, really cool to talk to a local. And she was an incredible gal, a wonderful waitress. Enhanced my morning 110%. Um, now uh, we had French toast and we had reindeer sausage. Who would ever guess? Which of course is just caribou, but still on the menu it says reindeer sausage. This has been, so far this has been a really, really incredible adventure. Um, my portion of the adventure is about done. We are going to go down to uh, the local town, which is, this is part of that town. It is, uh, I can't come up with it. I'm having a lot of trouble with Alaskan town names and how to pronounce them. This is, uh, this is how you spell this place. And it's uh, Alaska, Alaska, Alaska. Uh, when I think of it, I'll remember how to, <laughs> I'll just print it on the screen. And then we're going to weave our way on up the coastline, kind of through the mountains, up to Palmer. We're going to go up into the mountains and uh, north of Palmer. And Palmer is where we're going to stay the night tonight. And we're going to meet the guide and his family for supper. So big, exciting day today. I just wanted to tell you guys how amazing this place is. Positively incredible. And of course, with coronavirus, there is nobody here. I basically got the whole resort to myself, which just makes it even more fun. So on to the next thing. Hotel Alieska. Alieska. Where are we, Miles? I already forgot. <laughs> What's Summit Pass? Summit. Summit. Summit, Summit Pass. Summit Pass. North of Palmer. Right. We're in Alaska, that's where we are. <laughs> I wanted that rock. I can't find it in my camera though. It's really interesting. They almost look like little succulents. But it's like walking on a cloud. It's all squishy and mossy. The dills. So we started this morning at 86 feet above sea level and now we're at 36, 86, so 3,800 and something, gone up quite a ways. Thoughts on Hatchet Pass. 
uh, it'd be really beautiful, I think, if it was a clear day. We couldn't see the view necessarily because it's very, very foggy. Um, not necessarily foggy, like the clouds are low. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. It's a every interesting road part of it is paved, very steep and, and a little bit rough. And then they get up towards the top and it turns into a um, dirt, which is pretty much a kind of a slick mud. It's kind of rainy. We couldn't see too far because of the clouds, but it was really pretty anyway. The biggest thought I had was how green it was. I've never seen anything so green in my life. The ground cover is completely short, like this tall or less of like moss and little plants. I have no idea what they are. Like, like in my head, the only thing they kind of look like is succulents. They're very spiky, um, very lush. Some of them had little uh, berries on them. Who knows, but it's, that's a thought that I had was that it was so green and so lush, very, very crisp. The air is very, it's not icy, but it's very crisp. Worth the drive. Huh? Hold on. So we are in Palmer, Alaska tonight. Uh, we just had supper with the guide and his family. Absolutely incredible people. Just I can't even put into words how incredible people they are. Um, Palmer is kind of a strange little town. Um, I can't really understand what's going on here. It's not a tourist town. There's a lot of like government, city signs everywhere, um, but there's no hotels. There's literally like four places to stay and three of them are owned by the same people. And this is where we are staying tonight. <sighs> There's the miles. We are very tired. It is like midnight where we're from. <laughs> That's where we had beers earlier. They were good. We just got coffee and a smoothie at this little place back there. Both are very good and the gal was nice to talk to. Um, everybody I talk to gets really, really excited. I think I missed the curb, hold on. Like itty bitty little driveway into this place, and I'm driving a dually. So you gotta get it right. Okay. Everybody I talk to is, I said, they ask me what I'm doing in here in Alaska, which you know is fair because I don't look like I fit in. That's for damn sure. And I'm like, oh my hunt, my husband is hunting the doll sheep, and they go ballistic. Like it is a huge, huge deal around here which, you know, I never even heard of before Miles said, well, this is something I want to do. Okay. Great. Whatever. And this little town, this doesn't have anything for me to do on it at all. I've got like, so I got the time change. I can't figure out what the heck's going on in this town. I don't know if I explained that well enough last night, but 
Like there's thousands of people here. There's vehicles everywhere and there isn't a hotel. There aren't hardly any like shops. There's no tourist shops. There's no, all there is is the three little historical hotel ish. They're inns, historical inns and um, a few restaurants and a lot of like government buildings. So I don't, I don't know what's going on right here. No idea. Go ahead. Nope, never mind. I'm lost. Sorry. So it's August 19th in Palmer, Alaska. Um, it's about nine o'clock. Miles is still sleeping. I'm looking a little bit rough. It's gonna take some, it's gonna take a shower and some makeup to make this tired, travel weary person look better. But I am gonna go for a jog. Um, got some really beautiful scenery. Let me turn it around. The mountains are socked in. Planes come in like every four minutes they just fly right downtown that's where we're staying uh, anybody that actually knows me knows that this is a touch out of character for me to go for a jog but I am trying people I am trying to be more athletic trying to enjoy those kinds of things in life because this is the place to do it this is the place to get started the mornings are crisp and gorgeous so here we go. Okay. I've been about 10 blocks. I should tell you how out of shape I am. It's easier to breathe here. I don't know. The elevation is relatively the same as where I'm from. The air is cooler and crisper and I don't know, my lungs don't hurt as much, which is what usually holds me back when I try to jog at home. It's because my lungs get to burning so bad that I have to slow down and catch my breath and start again. It's just not as bad here. But one thing I'm noticing about all of Alaska that I've seen so far is that the landscaping here is incredible. Like, I was under the impression that Alaska had a short growing season. So, but all the plants are so big and beautiful and far along. I, it's just so gorgeous everywhere. I think I finally figured this town out. It took, it took walking the residentials to figure it out. Um, this is where everybody lives and they commute. This is where they commute from to work. So every town we've been to so far has either been like a business town, a city, or a tourist town. And this is one of the towns where people just live. So, back to it. I just stumbled on the cutest thing possibly ever. I'm in this beautiful little park um, right near where we're staying. And I've seen these signs all night wondering what they are. And they are a handmade storybook. So they're hand drawn storybooks that people have put up along these walking paths for the kids. And this morning I watched all the kids come and get on the school bus here. So they all walk by the storybooks. So cool, let me show you. They start clear back there. That's where everybody got on the school bus and the story goes this way. And right now I'm on this one. It is so cute. It says, she grazes on grass and she likes to say moo. I don't think that is what a llama would do. Oh, I said, I understand now. I think your mama must be a... And then on this picture, there's a cow. 
So it's, it's a story. It's a story all about this little calf that's lost and all the animals it comes across in Alaska looking for its mom and it's all hand illustrated. And it's beautiful. Somebody put a lot of work into these hand illustrated pictures. Makes me wanna, makes me wish I would've brought my art set. So cool. So I decided I wanted to go to Walmart really quick, which is in Wasilla, which is like, I don't know, what was it, 13, 7 to 13 miles away from Neves, not Neves, no, Palmer. We were in Palmer. Um, yeah, I was driving, which makes Miles nervous. All of a sudden it was kind of a big town with six lanes of traffic, which made him even more nervous. So uh, we had the GPS going the wrong direction. So I pulled off, went around the block, and there was nobody back there. I was just gonna park and let him drive and there was this great big spotted white old bunny that was on the sidewalk by the road. I'm like, I'm pulling over here so that we can switch because I want to see the bunny. And the bunny hops right along across in front of a music store. So I was like, oh, this must be my place. 